Okay, hi there guys. Before I do my little intro here, I just thought it would be interesting to do this little thingy here. I don't know if it was in the first episode or not. I'm sorry if you just heard my mouse and my keyboard. Uh, I'm actually going to move this thing in my bobs right now. And I might cut closer. So if you guys want, you can read this and I will see you guys in game. A lazy evening. There's nothing like a good time with nothing to do. I headed towards Olga Dimitrovin's cabin. The light in the house is on. Hello, Simon. You're quite late. Yeah, I uh, went for a walk to look around the camp. <laughs> All right, fine. You'll be sleeping here. She pointed her finger at one of the beds. Right here? I was a bit surprised. Yeah, is something wrong? We are all out of free cabins anyway. The camp leader smiled, but I rather think it was just out of politeness. She is a really cute girl with kind of creepy eyes. And creepy butt posters. I mean, like, hold up. Hold up. Look. That is a bag on his head. Is she just brawling around? What are you doing? Girl. Girl, a bra and a sock. Priorities. And then what the heck is this? What? I, I don't understand your room. I don't, I, is that a, what? I thought that was a saw, or that was like a bottle, and then she has a glass bottle of eyes, and then hair. What's happening? I don't want to stay in this room. You do want to be a decent pioneer, don't you? There was a clear emphasis on the word decent. Yup, sure. I was lost in thought for a moment. Don't you mind it, mademoiselle? She looked at me oddly. Same here. Which surprised me and some offense in her eyes. A pioneer should respect their elders. Ogla Dimitriven said strictly. Of course he should. No one argues with that. Why are we talking in the third person here? I blathered, not realizing what was wrong. Shouldn't you also? She stared at me. With that adorable face. <laughs> Under such a gaze, even mithril fro- What are these words? Under such a gaze, even Mithra frogged by the best dwarf masters from the deepest dungeons would melt. I'm going to move my mouse, I'm sorry. Should I what? What's up, Toots? Why is he talking? Oh my. Simon. Stop it. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm saying your name right, Simon. 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 Seyon. I don't know. Simon. Whatever I go with. That's your name. Sorry. Stop being a, a douche. You must be. Not be. Oops. You must address adults appropriately. Yes, of course there's a lot of strange things here, but this girl's a, a, a couple years older than me. Or maybe even younger. But I decided not to argue. Well, just a few minutes ago, I could have never called her an adult. I'd have to admit, she was also good in a strong character. 
And in any case, I wasn't in a position to argue. As you say, ma'am. Sorry. I hope you enjoyed that burp in your ear. I mumbled. Hmm. That's much better. That is how a decent pioneer should conduct themselves. And now it's time to sleep. Honestly speaking, I was going to become neither a decent or indecent pioneer. Just yesterday, I wasn't going to become a pioneer at all. But do I have a choice now? If you don't want to, we'll have to make you. This is the motto Oglethia Nutrivin was probably going to use. I decided... I climbed under the bed and closed my eyes, only to realize how tired I was after today. Something hammered in my head awfully as if my brains had started to shift all night, and they seemed to be aimed more at rolling steel than working on something more sensitive. The bus flew through my mind, and the square with the monument, the canteen full of pioneers, and the malicious face of Yulina. Salavia. Lena. And even recalling Alyssa didn't give me too much of a negative feeling. What if I'm here for good? I was having a dream. It seemed like I was in some kind of vacuum with nothing but nothing around me. But not only around, I was the only creature in the universe, as if the universe had returned to a state of singularity right before the Big Bang. And something was just about to happen. Suddenly, I hear a voice. I could not make out the words, but it sounded familiar. This voice was whimpering something gently as if it soothed me, and I realized it was the voice of that strange girl from the bus, the girl from the dream. But what is she trying to tell me? Who is she? Ah, oh, no. We woke up. Bright sunlight struck my eyes. It was almost noon. After stretching lazily on the bed and yawning, I started to recall the previous day. In a few seconds, all of its events passed before my eyes. The bus, the camp, the local inhabitants. No, that's just wrong. Not this whole situation, not me being here. It was wrong by default. My attitude towards what was happening was wrong. Because yesterday I fell asleep here just like that. And before that, I chatted nicely with the local pioneers. Even managed to crack a few jokes. How could I act like that in such a situation? I should be frightened or startled. Should avoid all contact with potentially hostile creatures like Alyssa. The last day's events were getting hazy, like I had a hangover. This really feels like the morning after drinking party. Yesterday's natural flawless, absolutely normal conduct becomes a nightmare in the morning, a grotesque illustration from the divine comedy. Yes, it's just like that, and I can't change the past now. Then again, I probably ass Then again, I probably assess the situation and I was acting accordingly. Accordingly. Not accordingly. Accordingly. <laughs> I glanced around trying to figure out whether I even thrown somewhere else, but Olga Dimitrovin's cabin looked the same as yesterday. Everything just se seemed to be in place except for the pioneer uniform which was hanging from the bed head. I fumbled with it, distressed, and tried it on. At least this is better than walking around in winter clothes. Wish I could see myself, but I looked like a clown. And for that, I need a mirror, at least a tiny one. I finally found one on the wardrobe door. Holy! I looked at the newfound pioneer and jumped away in surprise. There was some teenager on the other side of the mirror. He resembled me, but he wasn't me. 
Where did the weak stubble go? Where are the bags under my eyes? The slouch, the deathly fatigue on my face. It seemed that I had not had been thrown back in time or in a parallel reality, but instead I had simply changed bodies with someone else. Right, that's simple. Such things happen every day. I look at the closer and sh closer at the stranger and only realize that it actually was me. It just wasn't today's me. Maybe the one from between my school and university years? Well, at least that's something. There you go, the person in an extreme situation did fail to notice the elephant in the room after all. But the camp leader noticed it, and last night she told me off for adjusting her without proper respect. Ah, screw that. I doubt my appearance affects anything else. If the clock was not lying, breakfast was long over. Oh well, I tried to find something in the canteen. It worked out well yesterday with Celevia, didn't it? Those memories made me smile involuntarily. Ah! The sun was shining brightly outside. A light breeze was blowing. A beautiful summer's day. I had not felt so good in the morning for several years. All problems were gone, vanished into clouds that were white as snow. Olga Dimitrovin came out of nowhere. Good morning, Simon. Morning? I smiled, doing my best to show no matter what, my morning was indeed good. You only arrived yesterday, so I decided not to wake you up, but breakfast? Never mind, take this. She handed me something wrapped in paper. Judging by the oily stains, they had to, there had to be sandwiches inside. Oh, thank you. Now go wash yourself. I was about to leave. Wait a second. Oh, give me dear. Sorry, girl. Oh! Guys, she's wearing a hat. Oh! She's so cute. Can we date you? Please? Olga Dimitrovina quickly ran into the house and came out to shovel a small bag into my hands. To shove a small bag into my hands. <laughs> Inside it, I found a toothbrush, soap, a small towel, and something else. I did not look too closely. A pioneer should always be clean and tidy. Let me do your handkerchief properly this time. Yours is a skill. You should do it yourself once you learn how to do it. So do I have to? Uh, I'm I'm just gonna go wash myself now. Yeah, right. It could get hooked on the tap and strangle me. Fine. Later then. And don't forget about the lineup. Pencil, paper, drawing lines. You don't forget such things. What lineup? What do you mean, what lineup? She frowned. It's Monday today. Weird by my approximation. It should have been Sunday. Then again, a shift in the day of the week is hardly the worst thing. Usually we have lineups early in the morning before breakfast, but it's Monday today, so we're having it at 12 o'clock. Don't be late. All right, but where? At the square, where else? There is no reason to argue. I headed to the bathing place.